Notion just released Home and it's a real game changer. So in this video, you will learn what actually is Home, how to make the most out of this new feature and how Home solves one of Notion's biggest problems, well, at least partially. First up, what actually is Home? Well, Home is a new section at the top of your Notion sidebar and it's designed to be a one-stop shop for all your activities in Notion. Think of it like an out-of-the-box, ready-made personal dashboard for you. And here's what it looks like. Up top, we have a nice greeting and then we see our most recently visited pages. Then we have the My Tasks section which we'll talk about in a second because this is the most amazing part. And then we see Feature Templates and a Learn section. That's at least if you use Notion in single player mode. In multiplayer mode, so if you're in a workspace with several team members, you will also see a suggested for you and a trending section. And this automatically suggests you certain documents that you should look at based on your behavior. So in suggested for you, right, this is like based on your personal preferences and document types that you usually look at. Whereas trending shows you what is like currently most viewed in a certain team space. So particular in larger organization, right, where you have a lot of things going around and you might wanna just, you know, stay in the loop for things that are going on, this is great. Plus, you can use this little toggle here that says in general to filter down by certain team space so you know always you know what the marketing team or operations is currently obsessing about. Oh, and Notion is rolling this feature out slowly over the next few weeks. So if you don't see it in your workspace yet, don't worry. It is prioritized for team workspaces though, so if you use Notion in single player mode, you might have to wait a little bit longer. Actually, let me know down below in the comments whether you have access already. I'd love to know. Now let's take a look at how you can make this truly yours. The current customization options are still a bit limited. It really is an out of the box solution, but we can still tweak it a little bit. First up, you can change the way it greets you. So if I don't want it to call my name and I said, let's you know, call me champ, that's like the right start in the morning. You can just click on your name and do that. And then what you probably much more likely wanna do is make this your default page. So by clicking on the three dots in the top right corner, you can say change default start page. And here you have the option to either pick home so that means whenever you open Notion or you open you know, a new page with the command tab command, it opens home. Or you can have your last visited page or the top page in your left sidebar. And very important, top page in the left sidebar, that uh, counts your favorite. So you know, if you have a very top favorite, it would open that. Otherwise, if you wanna start working with home, you can that through this one. Then next up, the other setting in here you definitely wanna use is show and hide widgets because honestly, I don't care about feature templates and I don't care about the learn section. That's maybe great right, for someone who just gets started by Notion, uh, with Notion, but uh, for me, I don't really wanna see that. So I will click on here and I will hide both these sections. And again, right, if you're on a team workspace, uh, when you click on here, you will also have the option to uh, hide the featured and the trending page sections. So these parts are all nice, but the true power lies in the new My Task feature. This section allows you to pull in tasks from anywhere in your workspace, regardless of which database they live in. So it finally helps you to consolidate, you know, all that distributed, uh, all the distributed information into one single place. And when you start out, you probably don't see anything here unless someone in your workspace already set up for you. So you need to go actually to the databases and designate them as task databases. Because remember, Notion is pretty much blind to all the building blocks that we have. So we need to tell it, well, this is a task database. All right. Doing so is super easy. Let's just assume here are my, you know, yeah, I have company tasks and I have some private tasks here. And then uh, I can just click on the three dots here and then say turn into task database. And if I do that, it will ask me to now map properties because everything that wants to show up in home needs to have a status, a responsible person and a date. So you need a status property, a people property and a date property. So in this case, right, pick the property that represents the status. Well, that's in my case status, but I could also create a new and different one if that wouldn't work. I need then one that uh, represents the assigned person and you see mine is called responsible. So that doesn't matter. You don't need to match the names. You just need to, you know, functionally have something that represents who it is assigned to. And then last but not least, the date property. So we'll do that. And now I have these tasks and none of them are assigned to me, but let's actually assign these two here uh, quickly to me. And now if I head over to uh, home, I will see that these two tasks here pop up in this my to-do view. And now if I go to the other task database and I turn that one into one as well, right? So let's say, okay, here, turn into task database, status, that already exists, date exists. I don't have a assigned to property here, but I can just create it while I'm at it. So I just click on, whoops, <laughs> create a new, turn into task database. And now we get this assigning here. And again, right, I just put myself in here for apply to the competition. And now I see I have all the three tasks here showing up in one and the same view. 
And this consolidated task, you can now be edited pretty much the same way you're used to from other databases. So of course, can you know start by resizing the columns a little bit. I can also, of course, reorder them. And you see on the side, I will always see, okay, where does this task actually come from? I can also open the task and it will open the actual instance in the um, area where it belongs to, right? So this is currently, um, if I you know type something here, you know, <laughs> hello, this is uh, great. And I, I go out of it and I go then back to the actual instance of it, right? So here apply to a competitor. Hello, this is great. You see it updates it. So it really is the same task, right? It doesn't just show you like a mirrored version of it. Uh, you have then, of course, the usual filters and sorts, which are indicated here on this one by like these icons instead of the usual uh, uh, filter and sort uh, language. So that might be a bit confusing, but uh, I hope we get used to it quickly. So we can say, okay, filter actually by default, of course, shows things that are assigned to me and across uh, the to-do and in progress status. But I might want to have something else where I want to say, okay, only show me things where the due date um, is uh, this week. Of course, now nothing matches, but I can just say, well, this, okay, should be uh, today. And then it will appear here again. Or I can just go through this right to add a new task, right? So I can click on plus. And if I add a new task, so okay, let this, let's say this is, um, you know, go see a doctor. I can now here in the top, right, say move to company tasks. Or no, actually, this is not going to go in company tasks. This is supposed to go in private tasks. So again, without ever leaving home, you can uh, distribute your tasks into the different areas. We can also change the sort, right, uh, by clicking on here, the due date ascending by default. And most importantly, we have a limited amount of general database settings under the three dots, right? So I can click on here and I can now say, well, I don't want to see them as a table. I would like to see them as a board. Now, one thing uh, to keep in mind when you create a board, Notion changed the default settings for boards recently so that it hides empty groups by default. So you want to go in here, click on board, and then where it says group by status, click in here and then uh, turn off hide empty groups because on a Kanban board, right, you want to see all the different levels so you can actually drag and drop items between them. And one thing that I already realized while testing is if you do that initially, like it seems to be bugged, right? You can't drag it over here. But if you then just like go in here again and say color columns, uh, you can turn it off afterwards and again, it still will work. But if you color columns once, then like the, the drag it gets enabled. So I think that's a bug that should hopefully be fixed uh, very, very soon. And you see, if I drag them into complete, they disappear because currently I have it set so that um, the status is only to do or in progress. One last super useful feature, uh, if you click on the three dots, you can also then by default, um, if you're on a board, it's a subgroup. If you're on a different view, uh, it's the normal group feature. Uh, say that you want to group these by the source. This is super, super helpful, right? To not get confused where tasks come from. So I can say, okay, please group them by sort. And I see, okay, these are my private tasks. These are my other tasks. And then again, if you have tons of task databases, this comes in super handy because you know exactly, okay, marketing wants this from me or, you know, operations wants that from me. I can't stress enough how important this My Task view will become soon for companies and teams because it helps us solve one of Notion's biggest issue, and that's access rights. Right? In an ideal world, we would actually have just one task database for the company, with a few exceptions, but we would have one global database and everyone would add a task to it, and we would just use different views to segment it and show it on personalized dashboards. But that means everything is accessible to everyone. In particular, in bigger companies, that's often just not possible. At least HR and legal need to have a segmented part in the workspace, right? Or the same with docs. Now, so far, you really only had a few options, right? You either could say, okay, well, we have different databases and then we, you know, stack views below each other, but it's not ideal. But now, thanks to this one, you can pull the task. You can have different task databases, right? One for HR, one for management, one for the rest of the company. And then on your dashboards, you can pull them all into one view so that regardless of access levels, you can see them. So that's huge. Another really big use case is that now team members can use their private settings in the Notion sidebar, right? So if you are here in your sidebar, whoops, and you go to the very bottom and in this private section, you have something, you know, you have your own task that you don't want anyone else to see. You can now also pull them into this one because this home is only accessible to you. So you can then see your own private tasks side by side with the company tasks. And last but not least, you can also do this to help a bit in the typical agency setting, right? Where you have um, a bunch of clients and you want to share the tasks with them that you're working with uh, on for them, but you don't want them to see all your other tasks as well. Now, it's still not a perfect solution, but at least you can now create, you know, different task databases for different clients and then use home to pull it all together and still see it in one view. Again, not the perfect solution, right? There are still a few other things like row level permissions that would uh, even be better. But in the meantime, this is super, super helpful to make your team workflows a lot better just to show you a super simple setup for clients that you can pull up in a few minutes. So here I have a new clients database. And what I've done is in this clients database, I've created a template. 
and this database template, if we look at it, uh, for now only has one thing, it creates a new database, right? Very importantly, we unfortunately need to create separate databases uh, for each of them. And uh, I've just set it up to have the name, the status, the person and date, right? So all the property fields that we need for my tasks. And then I clicked in here and said, well, turn this into a task database, right? I can already do that on a template so I don't have to do it every single time. And now I can go out of here and I can say, well, okay, on my <laughs> tasks for home, right? You can trigger it the way you want it, for example, through a button that uh, adds a page to client as the new template whenever I click it. And then we have, okay, new client. And all I need to do is then to onboard them or like to set it up, to like rename this. So let's say, you know, uh, Notion or like Apple. I think Apple just hired me to help them set up their Notion workspace. And I wait a second for uh, the rest of the template to load. And there we have it. So the next thing what I would do is rename this, right? Unfortunately, again, we can't like uh, do that automatically. So I just wanna make sure that uh, I have a succinct name in here. And now if I head over back to my uh, morning home and uh, reload this, I will see the uh, all the other tasks pop up. <laughs> Actually, no need to reload. I just had a filter set up, whoops. So let's remove the uh, weak filter here. And now the other tasks should pop up here. Yeah, now it works. So I see my Apple tasks, one, two, three. And now we can just repeat this, right? So I have another client, so okay, uh, let's uh, spawn a new client. This one would be, um, oh, I think in NVIDIA, with all their growth, right, they also really, really need a Notion consultant to help them make sense uh, of everything. So NVIDIA tasks, and again, same game, right? I go back here, and after a brief delay, I see now my NVIDIA tasks pop up in there as well. Now, one uh, quick thing uh, to note, and that is that you see there are also client tasks in here. And that's because uh, I turned, like I added already some tasks, uh, some default tasks on uh, the, the template um, here, right, on the database template. And those, unfortunately, also get pulled into your main database. So actually best practice would to be not to do that, right? It was just for the uh, sake of the demonstration here. And instead have probably um, a button here, right? And call this, you know, like um, add default tasks in case you have any default tasks. And then uh, upon the click of the button say, okay, add them to uh, the uh, client tasks or drag them in individually. So. Uh, that would be the complete setup, but yeah, this is just a quick showcase right, of what is possible thanks to uh, this one setup that now pulls everything into one view. So to-do list for today would be open Notion, check whether you have access to home, and if so, go to your databases and turn them into task databases so that they pop up here in this one centralized view. The rest of your team will thank you for it. Notion Home is still not perfect, of course. I'd love to be able to customize it further and add my own elements to it but it's a super promising start. Imagine to be able to pull in from whatever databases you have in your workspace, all into one view. Really, really powerful. And while we're waiting for these next features to release, why not have a look at my favorite Notion hack of 2024? Just click here and I will see you in a second.